going to now look at how we would work with how we would figure out that formula from just a normal sequence. This was asked on a paper um, and it says show how the formula is derived. There is no formal proof for this. This is simply setting it up as a geometric sequence and working with it. A little bit harder than usual because it will all be in terms of letters, but let's give it a go. When a loan P, so that's our total amount, is repaid in equal repayments um, of amount A at the end of T equal periods of time, I is the periodic compound interest rate expressed as a decimal. That's really important. The formula can be used to find the amount of each repayment. Show how this formula is derived, and you may use the formula of a sum of a finite geometric series. So what we have is we have a loan here. Okay, so this is your loan and we've taken it out and it's P. And to get to pay back that loan, we're going to pay back A. And that is period one. So that is T1. Uh, but you, when we talk about that A, that A is actually going to be worth a little bit less when it comes back. That's called the present value. So because we're working backwards to that P, we're going to end up dividing it by 1 plus I. Plus T2, we're going to divide that by 1 plus I to the power of 2. So that's our term 2. Think of it as year 2. Think of it as whatever you want time period wise. And the last one will be 1 plus I to the power of however many time periods there are, which in our case we were told was t, so this is t, t. So to figure out how do we jump from one to the other, we're multiplying it by one over one plus i. So that will be our or, our common ratio for the geometric series. And we need to know two things for the geometric sequence. Well, we need to know three things, really. So our first one is A, the first term, which is A over 1 plus I. The next thing is OR, the common ratio, which is 1 over 1 plus I. And the third thing that's really important that you know is N, which is equal to T. You then have to work with your SN formula. So S, and we're going to do T in this case, is equal to A, so our first term, 1 plus I times 1 minus or to the power of n, which in this case is t, all over 1 minus or 1 plus i. So that is our formula and we want to take that formula and work it through to basically make it look like this. So notice that there's no S of T there in that formula. That's going to be equal to P, the total amount of the loan. We're now going to take this piece here and work with it until we make it look like what's in the question. So the first thing I'm going to do to try to tidy this up is I'm actually going to multiply the top by 1 plus I and the bottom by 1 plus I. So that's the whole bottom and the whole top. And um, when we do that, these cancel and the bottom line will look a little bit different. So what we get on the top line is A bracket 1 minus 1 over 1 plus I to the power of T all over. The 1 by 1 plus I gives me 1 plus I and then it cancels with the fraction minus 1 and that remember all equals P. And um, when we do that the ones cancel like this and we get something a little bit easier. So I'm going to just bring this over here for a second. Um, we end up with A bracket 1 minus 1 over 1 plus I to the power of T equals P times I. So I've multiplied both sides by I to get rid of that I in the bottom. I'm trying to figure out A on its own. So what we can do is A is equal to P times I divided by everything that was here beside A. So this whole bracket here. So we have 1 minus 
1 over 1 plus i to the power of t. Now, keep an eye on what we have, or what we want, and what we have. So at the moment, we have the p and the i. That's good. But we're missing a lot more. So what we're missing is a 1 plus i to the power of t on the top. So what we can do, just to tidy this up a little bit, is I'm going to leave the pi up the top. I'm going to break up this fraction um, because 1 to the power of anything is going to be just 1. So that gives me a 1 plus i to the power of t here at the bottom. And what we can do then is multiply the top by 1 plus i to the power of t and the bottom by 1 plus i to the power of t. And what we end up with here is a equals p i times 1 plus i to the power of t. And on the bottom, we end up with, I don't have much space for my bottom line, but 1 plus i, I'm going to just give a little bit of space here so we can actually see what's going on. A little bit more space. We have a equals p i times 1 plus i to the power of t. And here we have 1 times, so this whole bottom line is going to be multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of t, which gives us 1 times 1 plus i to the power of t. And when I multiply the fraction by it, the fraction effectively disappears. And we now have exactly what they wanted us to have. I'm going to just restructure it slightly, 1 plus i the power of t all over 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1 qed. Now there's lots of different ways you can work that algebra. I think that's the easiest way. Just remembering that when you multiply a fraction above and below the line by the same thing, you change the fact that you change um, how the fraction looks, but you don't change the actual value of the fraction you're getting an equivalent fraction. So that's absolutely fine to do. We're used to multiplying both sides of the equals, but that's not going to be as helpful in this particular question.